The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hi, I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture and I am here today with Nicole Fox with BASF and we are going to be talking about inoculants and how they impact stand establishment. So hi, Nicole. I guess the first question that comes to mind really is why would a grower inoculate their pulses? What would be the purpose in that? Yeah, it's a great question and it is also unique to pulses. So why growers inoculate with pulses? Well, the rhizobia that goes down with the inoculant actually forms a symbiotic relationship with the plant and it forms these root nodules. And what that does is it fixes nitrogen. So then it provides nitrogen to your plant and quite a bit, like upwards of up to 90% of the nitrogen, which is a huge cost saver and in terms of uh, what they're applying for fertilizer in the spring. Okay, so with the inoculants, what effect does that have on the stand establishment? Yeah, great question. So in terms of stand establishment, again, the rhizobia does take some time to form this relationship with the plant and start actively fixing nitrogen. So early on in terms of, you know, plant germination or early emergence, not a lot is helping in that sense. But past that, it's really helping create a very vigorous system and it gives you bigger, fuller leaves, fuller, uh, bigger stems and even larger roots able to attract more water and nutrients. And another benefit unique with these inoculants is some of them, um, including even like the nodulator brands with BSF, they have additional biologicals added to them. And what these biologicals can do is, you know, attract more water and nutrients, uh, can enhance nodulation and really help with early season crop establishment and continue with nitrogen fixation throughout the season. Okay, so once you've inoculated in the spring, how long does that actually affect the plant? How long is it assisting that plant? It is actually surprisingly long. So about two weeks after crop emergence, the nodules do start forming. It takes about three to four weeks after crop emergence before they're actively fixing nitrogen. So around there is our starting point and it really does fix nitrogen until the end of flowering. And the maximum number of nodules and nitrogen fixation is really happening at about mid flower. So that's when the crop needs the nitrogen the most and the highest amount of nitrogen and really helping it get towards creating the pods and the seeds. Right. And so how do you know that it's working? If you go out in the field, what are you looking for to know that your inoculant is doing what it's supposed to do? Yeah, it's also a great question and something everyone should assess so that they know if they need to take any other measures to top up with any additional nitrogen sources. So when you go into your field to check your plants, you want to go around that three to four weeks after emergence. That's again when they start fixing nitrogen, those nodules. So what you're going to do is go into the field, make sure you're taking again a representative, representative sample. So multiple spots in your field, you're going to dig out the plants, emphasis on that digging, because if you pull them, you will rip the nodules off and it might be misleading. So we're going to dig them out carefully. We're going to wash off the dirt so that you can assess the roots. You want to look at the number of nodules, the size, and even the color of the nodules. So when we look at the nodules, we're going to notice sometimes there is, uh, if you use a seed applied inoculant, the nodules will form primarily on your taproot. And if you use an inferro inoculant, usually it'll be a bit on the taproot, but more on that secondary kind of lateral roots there, because that's where those roots come in contact with the rhizobia. And then the last thing we want to do is also check that these nodules are actively fixing nitrogen. So you can pull some of those nodules off, slice them in half carefully, and we're going to look at the color. So the pink to reddish color means they're actively fixing nitrogen. If it's any other color like brown, white, green, they are not actively fixing nitrogen. So those are not providing any benefit to the plant. Okay, so are there different types of formulations for uh, inoculation? Yes, there are actually. There's about three different uh, formulation options out there. So there's liquid that applies to the seed, but some can also go in furrow. There is also peat and some is self-adhering peat or not. And you require a sticking agent also applied to the seed. And lastly is a granular in furrow that can be clay based and peat based again that just goes in furrow below the seed. And really the options of those different inoculant types is really dependent upon the farm and the grower and what works best for him. Anything applied on seed has a very low on seed survivability. So that's the time that the rhizobia can survive once applied to the seed and being planted. 
a lot of growers are ready to do the on-farm inoculation and some prefer to have the flexibility of going in furrow because you can just apply it at any time during the season. It really doesn't uh, expire until the end of the season as well. It gets you away from if there's seed treatment compatibility issues or anything like that. So you've, you're going to inoculate, let's say you're making that decision in the spring. Do you still need to fertilize? Can you get away without fertilizing? Yeah, it's uh, honestly a controversial topic, I find. Uh, there's been lots of research done that says your, your pulse crop will be fine without a starter, or a starter fertilizer. However, what we do know is that pulses can only really fix about 50 to 80 percent of, of the nitrogen that they actually need. So really your best bet is start at the beginning of the season, get some soil samples from your field, take them into the lab to get assessed to figure out what you're starting uh, nutrient uh, levels are at in the soil and then figure out if you do need to add any additional nitrogen to offset what the plant cannot fix as well is there any other nutrients missing such as phosphorus which is also an important one for nitrogen fixation and even another point to remember is that the uh, plants really only fix nitrogen in that first kind of 15 to 30 centimeters of the soil. So anything deeper won't really account for it. So really taking that full picture, understanding what you're going into, what you're seeding into. Right. You can make a lot of other agronomic decisions based on soil sampling anyway. So it's really best practice all around. Yes. Right. And what are the chances of nodulation failing? Uh, the chances, I would say, are dependent on the season every year. Remembering that inoculants and biologicals are living, breathing organisms, so many things can affect their survivability. So if we think about a couple different scenarios here, there's things like product quality. So how you store your inoculant once you get it on farm, we want to make sure that it's in a cool place, away from direct sunlight, away from drying winds, because that can really be detrimental to the rhizobia. Next, there can be things like application issues. So did you pick the right rhizobia for the crop? You know, what rhizobia is needed for peas and lentils is different from soybeans. So making sure you select the right inoculant, making sure it's compatible with the seed treatment you choose to go on your pulse crop, making sure you're applying it at the right rate. Anything lower might not be enough rhizobia to create effective nodulation. So that's not an exhaustive list, just to name a few. And then same with once it's in the ground, you know, again, exposure to the environment is harsh to these living, breathing organisms. So even in the first two weeks after seeding, if we have extremely dry soil, that can cause the rhizobia to dry out and desiccate and not be able to form that relationship. And another key point too, when we discussed starter fertilizer, is if you go in with a high rate of nitrogen fertilizer, the plant is naturally gonna pick what's already available then fix its own. So it's really making sure you have a fine balance between what you are applying for your nitrogen fertilizer and, and balancing it with what the plant can fix. Great, that's a lot of really great information. And do you have any tips or encouragements for producers that are looking to inoculate their crops? There are a ton of options out there. I can guarantee you're gonna find something that fits for your farm, for the seed treatment you wanna use, for the equipment that you use. So really ask your retail, reach out to your BSF rep, whatever you choose. And again, pulses, unique to them is, inoculate, is inoculation and fixing their own nitrogen, take advantage of it. Fertilizer prices are just keep growing. So try and save some money where you can. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And that was Nicole Fox on Real Agriculture. Mm -hmm.